Leave one apart. I'll weasel my way to the back here. Good morning. I'm Bob Parks. I'm the prosecutor here at you. Wonderful to meet you. I'm Kathy Allen. Kathy, okay. Canal's daughter. Nice to meet you. And who do we have here? I'm, I'm Janet Allen, his wife. Oh, okay. I'm and this is my mother. Oh, hello. Nice to meet you. She's Kathy's partner. This is okay. Ken was my father in law. I'm Ken's brother. Okay. And I'm his sister in law. Okay. Hi, I'm Denise. Okay. Real good. And I might better have a friend, okay? Okay. All right. All right. Let me explain to you what's going to happen this morning. Um, Robbins and Warnish are going to plead guilty. Um, Everybody. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Just leave it open. It, it doesn't matter. They want to stand there so that they can they can hear. Privacy. Privacy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Privacy. All right. That's fine. Whatever. Kathy's requested it be shut. Figure something out. Um, and Robbins this morning are going to plead guilty to burglary in the first degree and involuntary manslaughter in the first degree. Uh, we are going to be dismissing the receiving stolen property because that's a little harder to prove with uh, what we call the bezel case that came out uh, last year. The Missouri Supreme Court said that uh, from up until January 1st of 2017, there was no felony stealing in Missouri. So we couldn't charge them with stealing for the items that they took from the home because the Supreme Court said, there's no felony. We had been re doing receiving stolen property, but we agreed to drop that because it was in the car. It was used for identification for the people, but it um, was going to be a hard thing to prove which one took which. So uh, they are pleading guilty to that. Now, the third defendant, that's the one that uh, Judge Wood let out on his own retirement treatment and and everything uh i was hoping we were going to be able to do him today but um i talked to the attorney yesterday they still want more time uh basically what's happening in that case is he will end up pleading i am 99 percent sure but they got to talk him into going back to jail it's a lot easier to get people to plea when they're in jail than when you let them out. And he's been out for months, and so that that's going to be a, a problem. These three people uh, were all extremely high on drugs that day. We got us. May, may I interrupt with questions, or should I hold them to the end? Hold them to the end. Okay. Um, that's, they... We got a statement from uh, Robbins. We didn't get any statements from the other two. Uh, we've got them connected because of her statement and because of all the stuff that we found in the uh, car when they were arrested. Um, the judge is going to let them enter an Alford plea, which means that they are saying that the state has enough evidence to convict them, but they're not admitting guilt because they can't remember anything. Oh. How convenient. Yeah. But they are they are pleading. Uh, the judge yesterday he said that he was going to uh, let you speak today, but he was going to order a sentence advisory report. We had set this up as a plea and go to where they would just plea, be sentenced and, and gone. He said no, he doesn't want that. He wants a sentence advisory report so the sentencing will not be done today so uh hopefully we can get uh we'll get through the pleas uh we'll get through your statement we'll do each one individually each one of the defendants individually uh because we can't do a, a just a, put them both up there and plead them we have to do them separately to keep things uh going now your questions um I will only be giving my statement if the judge accepts the plea deal. Is that right? 
no he's going to allow you to make the statement he said he would rather hear from you before he makes up his mind on sentencing okay so he's going to allow you to do the it, it's a little back axe word is uh, than what we normally do but i think it's a better deal to get your statement out now okay then then later uh, good uh so you were Dividing the acceptance of the plea or non-acceptance of the plea from the sentencing. So is it? No, he will. He will accept the plea, but then he's going to order a sentence advisory report before he does the sentencing. So he will absolutely accept a plea of involuntary manslaughter. Is he's that going to accept. Deal? That's that's it. Because that's he, the he's only already thing. accepted it. Well, that's the only thing I'm presenting to him. Oh. So he has no choice but to accept uh, or reject. Uh, well, if he rejects it, then they're just not. That's the end of it. You'll go to trial. You well, you pursue the prosecution. That if would, the that would be sentencing. That would be you reject the plea recommendation. Of yeah, the prosecutor. And, and then it would just start everything all over. But but then they would just you know, there's no way he can uh, he can not take the involuntary manslaughter because that's the only thing that I'm presenting to him. Okay. Can you help me understand why uh, you are agreeing to involuntary manslaughter? Because it more closely fits the um, physical evidence and the scenario that we have. We had one jailhouse snitch that we interviewed that said that they said they went out there to, to kill him, uh, but he wanted so much stuff. To, for his testimony, I don't believe. Was his? I can't remember. I honestly cannot. Remember. Was he in Boonville? <sighs> could be, could be, but we don't. It it was his his stuff was just almost out of the newspaper. So your physical evidence, you're saying, can you be more specific about, you know, the physical evidence and how it doesn't support felony murder? Because I believe that a jury would more closely do an involuntary manslaughter. Because as high as these people were on drugs, I don't think I could, I could do the intent that, that would be necessary but felony murder is not about mental state you're right but my decision is i believe my mouth is dry i'm sorry i believe that the best course of action is to do the involuntary and not the felony murder the felony murder was it is always um you know up in the air it could could be could be not you you just don't know but my dad died in the, during the commission of a felony. You're right. So, I've got some more questions. Um, I recall on February 27th, we were talking on the phone, and this is the first time that I heard from you about, you know, what the autopsy said and how did my dad die. And you told me on this day that they did not strangle my dad. They did not choke my dad. That's right. And the explanation you gave as an interpretation, I guess, from the coroner, I don't know who the coroner is, I wonder who that is, um, was that they, one of them was sitting on my dad's back or had their knee in his back. Correct. That's what you said. Last night, I spoke with the forensic pathologist who performed my dad's autopsy and wrote the report. And he said, as it states on the death certificate, my dad died from asphyxia, from neck compression. And he said that, and I have this. Okay, so I what, had, what's, what's your question? What's your question? It, it's coming. It's coming. Well, let me put it this way. Can I I, I have made the choice 
of how we're going they to They strangled do. him. They didn't strangle him. They sat on his back. They, the core, the, uh, the forensic doctor. pathologist well, told I'm me. Not, I'm not going to. They I'm, strangled wait, him. Wait, let her talk. Wait, wait, let her wait. talk. I am not going to argue with They you. did this to him. And there are wounds on his neck. They, I am not going to argue with you. They did this to him. And there are wounds on his neck. And you never even talked to the pathologist. And he I said, never talked to the pathologist. He told me you didn't call All him. Right. All right. I am not going to sit here and argue with you. You're getting away with murder. They intended to kill him. Wait, but the priest said, aren't they, aren't they going to be available now as probation is about to be well, since he's doing a pre-sentence, isn't it probation and an option for these offenses now? No. Yes, it is, but it is an option. Well, I get that, but it becomes an option. About it becomes an, an option, but it doesn't become yeah. what's going to happen. I, well, I'm just as concerned as I are. Yeah, I, mean, I you know, Normally when you wave, a, anytime I've heard a defendant's waving a PSI, I've never heard the judge say he wants one. I agree. When they, they this want, this, judge, out, this, this judge, judge out here wants a PSI for almost, or a... Yeah. Yeah. SAR for almost everything. I'm just, I'm just the old friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He died in this position. I'm not going to argue with you. That's crazy. That's I am corrupt. Not. Mr. Hart, I would like to ask a question. You made the statement that these people were high on drugs. What evidence do you have that they were high on drugs at that wee hours of the morning that they entered my home and murdered my husband? Yeah, blood tests. What what evidence do you have that they were high on drugs? They you the did not arrest them until timing, midnight that night. The timing and everything, they were you know, what evidence do you have? Of what? Do you have medical evidence? Do you want the truth? Yes. Yeah. Your husband was a pedophile. Uh, your oh, husband shit. Your husband enticed young men to come to his house for sex and then gave them either drugs or money to go buy drugs and then let them come back to his house to shoot up. These three people went to his house that night because the night before he had allowed the brother of one of the people to shoot up in his house and overdose and Ken had taken him to the hospital and they went out to confront Ken to tell him to leave the brother alone. Now we've had an ongoing investigation on this for over two years. Uh, we have had several people that have come forward but they've always gone back to Ken and started the cycle over again. So that's why this took place. And that's why so I... premeditation. No, that's why I said I went for the involuntary manslaughter. So this is going to become public? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm telling you all, here in private in this room. <laughs> you are wrong. My dad is not a pedophile. No, I said I'm not going to argue with you. I know what that's, that's That's the truth. And that's what does that have to do with his murder? Hmm? What does that have to do, his, these allegations, with his murder? He's that's, dead. That's why we don't want, I don't want to try a uh, uh, felony murder, because then these people are going to get up on the stand and they're going to trash your dad. If they murdered him, they got to go away for longer. Well, they're not. They're wow. Not. They're going to be on the street. So you've already tried and convicted 10 of pedophilia. That's no, no, I'm telling you the background of why these people were there. It's a hate <laughs> so crime. It's it, not a hate crime. Oh, man. It's not a hate crime. This oh, is going to be God. all over. Oh. Yep. You just sat here and said that it's Ken a was a pedophile, but you didn't prove it. If you investigated him for two years and didn't prove it, how can you sit there and say that? Because we had three boys that came through and gave statements three to Three drug it. addicts. 
Jesus. If you want to get Ken Allen, if you want to get Ken Allen, make this allegation. You'll get it. Absolutely. Do you have any other questions? Because I have a meeting with Why have you not recused yourself? Because this is a conflict of interest for you? Because my dad was suing the prosecuting attorney's office, including you. He was. I had I had not. Yeah, it was. I have it in writing. Wow. This just happened. This just happened.